Hey, what's going on everybody today on the channel? We're gonna be delving into a longer series. We've got shiny Over here in the top left hand corner shine down in the bottom left. So might be a little bit of a communication problem here or uh, Deciphering between these two players might become an issue I'll do my best though shine everybody knows him everybody loves him. He's a crazy crazy zerg player who's been perfecting his macro play and continuing to bring us a lot of great and interesting games. Uh, whenever he gets cheesed, he cheeses it right back. Shiny is not as popular, he's not as well known, but he's done pretty well for himself. Uh, kind of outside of the SSL scene, he's a K-League player, that's the Korean Pro League. Um, he's earned himself like 30 grand when I checked on Liquipedia, you know, he does a, a lot of participation in more fringe events, you know, not live events, uh, more online tournament type things, and he does very well for himself on the ladder, so he's a strong Terran player. Maybe uh, someday in the future, you know, he might make his first appearance in the ASL, the SSL now and show us some great games, some good performance, but he's got a little ways to go, so I'm expecting a lot of Shine victories here. We'll see what Shiny can bring, though. Appears like he wants to open with a 1-Rex Fast Expand, whereas Shine will open with the 12 Hatch, so pretty normal openers here from both players. A Scout coming out, as you do here as the Zerg. Just want to go ahead and make sure that there's not an 8 racks incoming. As soon as he sees that uh, racks in the wall, he knows exactly what's happening. Won't be forced to build too many uh, Zerglings to defend. At least for a little bit, can just focus on his economy without too much of a worry. Shiny going to be sending his SCV across the map now. Looks like he went to scout top right, but seeing that drone coming in. He knows that he needs to come down here to the bottom left. Make sure that there's no lings incoming. That he can be safe to send this uh, marine out on the map. He's actually been pretty aggressive with the marine. Which could turn out badly for him. But as he gets in here and sees the 12 hatch. And the speed of this lair. He should know. It's unlikely that there's going to be... Any sort of real aggression. Wait a second. Can he actually get this drone? Oh my god. He got the drone. There was an opportunity there for Shine to save that. But he didn't really take it. He even kills a Ling as well. That's kind of crazy. Are the Marine going to make its way in? No. Did a little uh, sidestep there. I don't know what that was all about. He probably, if it pathed a little bit better, could have gotten in to the main base. Just bought a little more time there. But... Pretty insane that he got one drone. Usually that first marine, if you just send it directly across the map, can force a drone to run away. But instead of moving this direction and running away from the marine, he actually went up into the corner and got stuck. Which is a, kind of a rookie mistake there. Unfortunate. Shine loses one drone already. Uh, almost unforgivable at the highest level of play, but I'm sure that he can... Find a way to bring this one back. Just the one drone uh, with this macro opener. It, it's it's hard to overstate though how much of a big deal losing one drone is in the early game. When you've only got 18, 17 drones and you lose one. Oh man, it just it hurts the economy so badly uh, for the Zerg player. It's really not nearly as much of a big deal for a Terran or Protoss. Uh, and it stacks up massively. Like we might, you know, be missing uh, out on enough money to build a third hatchery. We might, you know, have a little bit of a trouble um, using all of our larva to produce Mutilis. He's managed to get full saturation here in his natural. He has full saturation in the main as well. He only produced four lings, so he should have some larva coming here soon. Ah, uh, wow, well, we really don't have much larva. 
for this mutilus time you can see one larva here and one larva here that's a little bit rough usually you'd like to be producing six mutas right off the bat with a play like this but See, Shine is going to be slowed down quite a bit by some of that early game interaction. Five mutas are on the way now. Some turrets are going to start to be built back at home. This is a bit of a tough position to defend here as Shiny. Could see Shine try to uh, harass this spot. This area up here can also be difficult to uh, dislodge the mutas from, but... It's got a pretty good group of bio out on the map and with the very few low number of mutas that are coming across the map this is actually a very significant problem we've only got five mutas here to potentially fight back this uh, marine medic force one good thing is that we there's no plus one yet that's just been started so these marines are not as strong as uh you know early ebay builds the more popular build right now but he's going to be pushing out here and forcing Shine to stay. Four Sunkins get started. We could see Shine go across the map and just try to, to dive into the main. A scan just went down. I think he saw the natural and how many Sunkins are being produced. As soon as these are done, I believe we're just going to head directly towards this main base. Shine still poking at the edge of these Marines. But Shiny has realized what's happening. He's going to send a bunch of his Marines back home. He's going to continue to produce turrets. He spotted this base down here in the bottom right. He's going to send his Marines over here on a stim, just heading down towards this base. Shiny going to try to counterattack, but I think Shiny's done this perfectly. Terran is, I think, going to find himself in a very good position. Having on top of these turrets. Mutas are taking quite a bit of damage. The marine group here in the main is a little bit scary. And the third base goes down. This is this is rough, guys. This is very, very rough. We don't have a hive on the way. We don't have lurker. It's just pure muta being produced from Shine off of two bases. And he's going to try and just bang it out here in the main. I really would like to see Shiny just move these back home as soon as possible. Because really... The way he's going to lose this game is if he loses control of the main before he gets his vessels out. Uh, it looks like he's actually going to go for Valkyrie instead, but you have to be a little bit concerned here as Shine. But as soon as you get, or as Shiny, as soon as you get this Marine Medic Force back into the main, you have two big clumps of bio one defending here and one defending here then you're completely safe you don't need to really worry good pre-repair there from shiny gonna be able to keep this uh missile turret alive well done armory is just about finished quite a few scvs have been killed but he's still on 32 it's a good healthy economy here on two bases still fighting still battling Shine trying to make something happen, just going all in with Muta. One drone has snuck out on the map. He may be able to sneak a base here somewhere. He's got the money for it. Spending all of his gas and just coming in over and over again to try and take these fights. Mutas are getting kind of low, but the marine number is not looking too good. Two turrets here at the back. He's going to dive over those turrets. A Valkyrie is about to be finished here. Marines coming back from the front line have joined up with these Marines in the main three racks production. Plus the Valkyrie should be enough to stop this all in. Queen's Nest and Hydralis Den on the way now. Shine realizes it. He's not going to be able to just win straight up with these Mutas. He has to start the transition now. Has he done enough damage to the economy? He's dropped. The SCV count. Oh my god. So many mutas just went down there. The SCV count is pretty low. 24 to 23. But the mutalist count just dropped dramatically. These marines, if they find the... Oh, he's going to find it with this one marine. He's going to find this base. All he needs to do is send out this army. 
go across the map and try to kill this base. If he kills this base in bottom right, he should be able to win this game. Hive is on the way. Lurker aspect is coming. Not a lot of SCVs in this main base. It's pretty dried up. Pretty good saturation over here. But Shiny is struggling. He does prevent this base down in the bottom right. That drone is going to cancel. Run and hide somewhere else on the map. Maybe he'll go for center right. Maybe he'll, he'll go for top right. I'm not sure, but he's making his way to the front now. Is he going to throw himself at the wall of sunken colonies? That's four sunken colonies and a few hydras plus the mutas with scourge. If he does it correctly, I think he can actually take this fight. Oh, here comes some Scourge. Gonna land on a couple of these Valkyries. Very nice control there. He loses some of his Mutas, but he can kills off all the Valkyries. Oh, I think Shiny's just gonna bust right through. Four Sunken Colonies proving to be not enough here. Trying to get the drones to mess with the AI of the Marines, but... He picks off every single drone. The sunken colonies go down and shiny takes victory number one in this series. A five game series here, guys, played in October of 2024. This is a nice fresh series here. You can definitely tell it's recent because of this map. We are on Deja Vu. It's been claimed now by shiny. I'm gonna jump into game number two. Impressive result there for game number one from Shiny. I think his ideas were very solid. He made a lot of the right choices. I'm a bit confused with so many Zerg players recently trying this style where they suddenly build a whole bunch of sunken colonies in their natural and then go for the base trade with Mutas. Because it, it seems like it rarely ends up working out for the Zerg. Um, maybe that was due to the early game damage that was done to Shine. He just felt like he didn't have enough Mutas on the map to pull like a Soul Key style Ling Muta crush of that uh, Bio Force. And he felt like he was going to get broken somewhere. So he had to make a decision. It just, uh, it doesn't feel good to ever give up your third base. It always feels like a loss. I've seen some recent games though with players like Hero able to uh, bring things back, but with a very fast hive uh, in a play like that, not with just Muta all in. Go directly into hive with the Mutas attacking, switch into Lurker and then try to get a Defiler to the front as quickly as possible. Two base, and a judo flip onto the Terran player and uh, win outright right away. It's uh, a risky strategy, but it is a way that you can potentially bring back a game from the brink of defeat. Uh, it just it feels weird to me to ever want to give up your third base like that. Now, Shine here. He's going to have to deal with an 8 racks this time. He sent out the drone um, after his 12 hatch. It's going to be making its way over into the main base now. And as soon as he sees gas and no barracks, he's going to know Marines are coming. We're going to have to react to this pretty quickly. Where is the drone? He should be sending one to the front right now and starting to pull drones here pretty soon. He's waiting for the factory to get thrown down so that he can try to harass that. But he actually needs to be dealing with this bunker that's about to be started. Oh my gosh. What is this overlord doing as well? Okay, that can get over top of the uh, high ground. Eight drones have been pulled. Does need to get them to stop bouncing off of each other or um, mineral walking over each other. Nice snipe there on one of the drones. Second drone will go down here in a moment. No pullback there from Shine, but he needs to get on top of these Marines. He's going to kill off two. A third Marine going to go down. But I think this is four drones that have been lost. So we've we exited the base with eight, and we've only got four returning home. That is pretty rough, considering the fact that he produced 
uh, lings here as well. Looks like he cleared out the marines, but it doesn't really matter too much because behind this, a factory has been produced and will be sending vultures to the front. So this is the real problem with this build as Zerg. You go ahead and hold it off with drones. If you lose too many, you have to build a, a sunken colony at the front. There's no choice. So you basically lose a bunch of drones. You lose your mining. You have way less mineral income. And then you have to sacrifice another drone plus a huge amount of minerals as well. It's like 125 minerals plus the cost of the drone. It's just so crippling to the early game economy. And then you're going to be dealing with a Wraith that's coming online soon. That Wraith is going to come and kill an Overlord 100%. There's no way to save it. <clears throat> He's going to go ahead and put down a, a Hydralist end maybe. He's actually focusing on getting the Spire out as quickly as possible. But this could backfire. He hasn't started Burrow. So... That one Overlord I was talking about, that will quickly snowball into two Overlords, and he could end up losing some drones as well, because he's going to be waiting a long time for this Spire to finish. I tell you, this is such a nightmare of a build to deal with on the ladder. It absolutely sucks. You can see even the best players in the world, uh, like, Sh uh, like Shine, will sometimes lose, you know, three, four, five drones. This time he lost four. It's easily enough damage for uh, the Terran player to feel happy. He's going to go after some drones. He's looking for the overlords, though. They've actually been sent south. I don't know why on earth he would ever want to go for these links. Maybe he's going for speed. <gasps> oh, boy. He's going for speed right now. He's going for speed. He's got four vultures. Dude, this is the dirtiest ladder build you've ever seen in your life. He's going to come flying in here with four speed vultures right past the sunken colony. And all the links have been killed. These drones on the ramp are about to be killed as well. He's going to have to pull them back. These vultures are coming in. They're coming in and they are going to deal insane amounts of damage. Here we go. Just going to go right in there. He only takes two hits. Five vultures in the main. Oh my god. Dude, every single drone going down here in the main base. Nothing has been spared. He's going to put one vulture in that main. And he's going to leave the last, the, the rest, excuse me. Oh, he's even got a vulture out here as well. He's going to leave the rest in the natural. Vulture out in the front is going to get a bunch of kills here. This is tragic. Absolutely tragic. The vultures are finally going to be picked off. The wraith is going to be uh, sent back home. There's a turret here. Shine not paying attention to that because of course he's not. He's paying attention to other things on the map. The Wraith survives even though it took one Scourge hit. Oh, this is so brutal. Guys, I sympathize so heavily with Shine in this spot. It's going to be incredibly difficult to win this game from here. Science facilities on the way. We're going to have uh, a Science Vessel out soon with a Radiate. If Shine just tries to mute it all in from here, we're definitely going to have uh, a an irradiate to help to deal with that. We've already got three wraiths. He's going to kill this overlord. The overlord's going down for sure. These things die so fast. And there's also a cloak. I believe cloak finished. I saw it in the production tab. I'm not 100% sure that it finished, but I'm pretty sure it's done by now. He's going to find this Overlord down here. It just gets worse and worse and worse. Could do another run by these Vultures just sharking around the front of the natural. And more and more Mutas are being made. He starts Pneumatized Carapace. He wants to maybe try to overwhelm with Mutas here. But I don't know if this is going to go well. I, I feel like this will not go well with the uh, Starport. And some... Okay, he gets a Wraith. But another dive here into the natural. One kill. Two kills. Is the best that he can do. 16 drones remain, guys. It's brutal damage. 
Another Overlord goes down. He can get here into the Mineral Line as well. Oh my gosh. The Overlords are too far away. They can't actually save this. Another drone goes down. He's going to split the Wraiths. Try to make a run for it. He actually get a hit on this. Oh my gosh, he's going to escape. That is crazy. Another drone going to go down here in the main base. This is so painful. This is so incredibly painful. He cancels Overlord speed. What am I looking at? I guess he realizes that the Wraiths are just going to be completely out of energy. So there's no reason to have Overlord speed anymore. He cancels that to just get more Overlords and Mutas out. There's the Irradiate immediately. Can he pull out? Oh my god. Oh, it's so painful. That was so much damage. Ah, oh, Sharp was, uh, Shine was not ready for that. Another Vulture in the main. One kill. Gonna get another kill here. It's like not quite able to, but he forces all the Mutalists back. Again, second kill. Another drone likely to go down here. He's going for it. He gets it. Three kills on the Vulture. I'm gritting my teeth, guys. This is so bad. This is so painful. Two science vessels out now we're gonna have two irradiates how are you ever gonna fight that here with scourge and mutas he's gonna pop out some scourge he's going for the transition an evolution chamber is coming he prevents the natural from from starting but yeah he just ggs out another run by into the main is going to frustrate shine to no end eventually this natural was gonna come down the command center was almost finished. Barracks were finishing up as well. He was going to push out with just a few Marines, a couple of medics, and two irradiates to push everything back. The four turrets here is pretty, pretty dirty. It's pretty nasty. It's like, okay, what's your only option here is to build mutas. And I'm just going to make sure that you do no damage. You just can't do anything to me the entire game. I'm going to harass you the entire game. I'm going to be up in your face and you you can't do anything to me. You can't even touch me. I don't think even a single SCV went down this game. Kind of crazy, but that's the power of the eight racks into one, one, one. It's disgusting. Honestly, it makes me sick to my stomach every time I have to play against it. I'm sure that Shine was just about ready to smash his keyboard after all of those run buys went through. Are you almost need to build like a hatchery in the front and an evolution chamber here to just make sure that this stops happening but he just didn't have the money for it i wish he would have built these two buildings right here if you build hydroden here evolution chamber here then this can't happen anymore and maybe you can get something done but shine was maybe trying to hide this a little bit he wanted to not alert shiny to the fact that he was doing this switch and I guess that's his downfall. Anyways, guys, we're going to jump into game number three. Shiny on a rampage. And Shine. It's got uh, a few more chances left here. It's only game number two. There's five games in this series. So let's jump into game number three. Okay, game number three here. And I am fully in the corner of Shine. After that game, what we just witnessed, I've got to say... Uh, my Zerg bias is going to come out in full force now. Just disgusting, dirty play there from Shiny. And look at this. Hey, Pantheon. I think I'm learning something right now. Placing the spawning pool right there does boost the uh, drone. Usually you'll place it just one hex over. But he's placing it with just one hex over the... A hatchery here am i crazy i feel like usually you'll place the the spawning pool right there with just one hex over the open area two hexes over the hatchery maybe he's onto something i'm gonna have to test this afterwards on pantheon and see uh, if this does make much of a difference or if this if this is different placement or not because it it looks different to me but we're opening with an early pool He's going to go ahead and make six slings right off the bat, uh, which is kind of crazy. Usually when you go over pool against Terran, you'll make four lings. 
then you get the hatchery out and you get the extractor down right away after that but he's gone for six slings here so he's hoping for some good damage uh, unfortunately there is a wall will there be an scv in the wall though he didn't send out a oh he did send out a second scv here it is there's an scv waiting right here he'll have to turn that around immediately he doesn't this is gonna be bad scv needs to get in this wall oh he's gonna run up the ramp okay not gonna be able to save this um, he's gonna fight here on the ramp. Can he get a good block? This is so far pretty good for Shiny. Uh, but now the Lings are in. They managed to sneak by. Some pretty good damage from the SCVs. Another Marine pops out. Only three Lings remain. See if how many SCVs he can get. One SCV so far. Two go down. He's keeping the SCVs in the wall. He doesn't realize that he uh, doesn't have any more aggression coming. I think this is pretty decent damage from shine so far let's see if you can get one more okay getting a couple of marines would be nice too one more marine okay yeah i'm not sure exactly how this uh pans out if this is worth it or not uh for the side of shine two marines are gonna start to move out now and put some pressure on force more lings out of shine i think this is the right move can't allow the Zerg player to just purely drone after this. Gotta come out and try to at least force a little bit more of a reaction. Force a few more larvae into these lings. And he does. He forces two more in. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and head uh, just, just send the marines back home at this point. Once the lings have been produced, there's no reason to stay. He's got four Marines on high ground. That actually might be enough. That might be enough to just fight these Lings. He's actually going to go all the way around the long way. So we might see Shine run into the natural. While these Marines are heading over towards his own natural. Oh, dude. I think Shine's going to get completely caught off guard here. Yeah, he heads over here. He's going to run in with his uh, few Lings that he's made. Oh, that was a great play by Shiny, by the way. Absolutely fantastic the way that he microed that. Keeping those uh, SCVs in front. Now these Marines can actually go behind the mineral patches. Oh, he's not going to do that. Oh, that's kind of a mistake, I feel. Go behind the mineral patches. It's so annoying. You actually can't clear it until you have uh, Mutas out. The Lings are just not going to do well against this. Okay, gets the two Lings right off the bat. Going to focus down a few more Marines. Or a few more drones, excuse me, with these Marines. Go behind the minerals. Okay, he will. He will. When he uh, senses the presence of danger, Lings are popping out. Uh, these are speed Lings, by the way. But Shiny is taking a massive lead. I'm not sure how many kills ended up going down with the uh, SCVs there. Shine's Lings might have caught in like one or two. But the damage is not... It's, it's not comparable. Okay, he finally does clear that up. If he was standing, like, right here, it's so much harder to clear that. But, you know, getting into a pretty reasonable position, he kills a few extra lings and keeps the drones away for some time. It's definitely not bad. It's a very good spot now for Shiny. I just, I don't know how you ever come back from a position like this as Shine. He's going to get a base over down in bottom right, he's got his plus one started uh, on this spire, but he can't afford to make any mutas. Uh, he's actually supply blocked at the moment. 26 of 26. He's been thrown off so badly by this marine attack, and he almost lost his hatchery, by the way. That is crazy. 412 HP on that is nuts. Finally going to make some mutalists. 500 gas in the bank. Six minutes, almost seven minutes on the clock. And we're just making missile turrets now. So I think Shiny really realized quickly uh, that the Mutalists had, were going to be severely delayed, which is amazing by him. Uh, he's added on the turrets just at the perfect time. He's going to have such a powerful follow-up as well. Just going into the three racks 
with the, the factory follow-up? No, four racks. Four racks immediately. He's got plus one on the way. Only one turret in the main is a little bit worrisome. I guess two if you count this one over the barracks, but only one turret here. I uh, think he'd produce a few more at this point, but Lurker upgrade is on the way. We'll see when he scouts that in the natural. Mutas are sharking around. Just about seven of them in this stack now. We've got another scan going down. Checking the bottom center. He doesn't actually know where the third base is yet. Gathering some more gas over here at the third. But doesn't have much on the mineral patches. Oops. There, he does scout it. Scans bottom right. Sees the base. He knows. He knows what's going on here. And I'm not sure if he's totally aware of a Lurker just yet. This should be the scan of the natural. No, nope. scan of the main. Sees no hive. Sees no hydrogen, so he's not actually aware of this just yet, but he does have the factory finished, and he's actually going to make a machine shop, so we can expect an upcoming tank push. Tank push in the near future here from Shiny. Another turret going to finish up. We've still got three remaining here, so pretty decent defense against these mutas. Just going to go ahead and <clears throat> remake those now. Keeping on top of that is very important. One marine in the bunker, not the biggest deal in the world, but it will prevent uh, Lings from just casually walking into this natural. Two lurkers down here at bottom right with one sunken colony on the way. Is this going to be enough to hold on against the marines? It appears to be the, the case. That shine will hold on down here. Just two lurkers is a little bit scary. If you spread really well and target one of the lurkers, you can usually break through something like this. But because he didn't scan first to see if there were lurkers, he ends up losing, you know, four or five marines before the fact, before the dive, which makes it a lot more difficult. Two, three lurkers down here as well. Hive is about to finish up. Evolution Chamber starts and... Mutas are looking for damage in the main base. Going after a supply depot or two. Not a bad choice. The engineering bay is a nice target as well. Kind of at the periphery of the base. Comes in. He's going to see the science facility is nearly complete. So uh, that's going to indicate to him the timing of when we're going to see vessels out. We might see him build some scourge and try to snipe that. Uh, now that he's confirmed that timing. Plus one armor on the way, some marines moving out on the map. Just clearing out the overlords. Overlord positioning is very good by Shine. And so getting rid of those Shiny will get him a bit of an advantage. He can get rid of those uh, vision locations. Maybe possibly supply block Shine as well. Right, Shine's putting up a very good fight despite all the damage that was done in the early game. He's going to be able to dive on top and kill all of these Marines out on the map. That is a huge victory right now. That's going to buy him a lot of time to just build his Nidus Canal, get his third base going, or his fourth base going, excuse me, uh, get into Defilers and make this transition uh, a strong one. Tanks are out. Three tanks. He's got quite a few Marines as well. He's going to start this push, but the fact that he lost a bunch of Marines just before this is going to hurt. Coming in and killing some more SCVs, dropping the count to 41. It's still a very healthy uh, SCV count here for Shiny. I would love to see Shine on top of this ramp, slowing this down, because he just needs to buy time. That is the only thing that's important right now. Ooh, Consume is almost done. Consume... All right, consume has started, excuse me. It's not almost done. The tanks are getting stuck here on the back. You can see how hard it is to maneuver these units uh, through this really tight choke. And if you're just up on top of this fighting, you can buy so much time. Four lurkers going to go out to the front and try to slow this down. They'll wait for the tanks to possibly siege here in the front and then back away. Radiate goes down on one of these mutas. It is a low HP one. So it's not going to deal too, too much damage. 
Good spread and split here. A lot of the Marines are getting picked off though. Wow, every Marine ends up dying. There's only a few more here from the rally point and the tanks are gonna get picked off. This is beautifully done by Shine. An excellent, excellent hold by him. Pretty crazy move there from Shiny to just try to spread and take down these lurkers. He really wanted to bust through before the Defiler was out, but it's out now and it has that all important upgrade. Consume is done. These lurkers will have to back off, but he snipes the vessel and we're going to have a Dark Storm here in the natural to deal with this any moment now. Yeah, he's just going to consume an egg here to make sure he gets that on time. It's like a lurker will fall, but he can maybe pick off these... Uh, tanks yeah he does get both the tanks so the time of the tank is over tanks are not going to be doing anything anymore oh dude the scourge oh shine what an unfortunate position for those scourge to be in he knows that there's a good likelihood that Terran will send his units oh my oh wait is this a full wall we can't get the lurkers past that is insane absolutely insane look at this the marines are gonna run through again oh that's so frustrating he is gonna bring up some lings to eventually clear this but i can't believe lurkers can't run through any of this the lurkers can't make it past here the lurkers can't make it past here either eggs if there's any eggs here the lurkers can't make it through here so this is a complete wall against his own units that is so, so frustrating. That's the problem with uh, having all of these... Or having to put down all of these buildings around your main hatchery. Because there's not a whole lot of positions you can actually throw down buildings. You're often going to block yourself off. And this is going to be bad for ultras as well. Like, if he, if he gets a drop in the main and he needs to bring ultras back to try and hold that, he's going to have a nightmarish time. Uh, bringing his ultras into his main just to kill off those dropped units. Now, fire bats are coming out here. We don't have a third base just yet from Shiny. He should be taking that soon. In fact, this should be a command center. It is more lurkers being popped out. We have another drop coming in along the right-hand side. It's so typical that Terran players will send a drop like this. It's actually really strong to just put two Scourge like this right there <laughs> it's it'll off it more often than not you'll end up catching the drop it's kind of hilarious but he's gonna wait to send in this drop for a little bit longer hoping for another uh, a bit of a, more of a distraction to come in Ooh, just barely able to save that vessel drops gonna come into this bottom right hand corner start to kill off the drones down here this is an insanely good play He's going to deal so much damage. Just targeting down one of the hatches. Might be able to get the other hatch as well. Definitely will kill this overlord. Lurkers are going to come down here. That dropship is going to be killed. But he's pulled a bunch of lurkers away from someplace. I guess it was his natural. That's so many lurkers. Oh my god. Shine building kind of a crazy number of lurkers in this game. He's lost quite a few. And on the defense right now, he's got like at least 12. How come I can't shift click this? That's so weird. This is a lot of lurkers on this defense. He's going to be switching into ultras here very soon. He had to remake that spawning pool, of course. Ultraless caverns on the way. Third base is landing. A fourth base has been started. Shiny going to go into the late game. He's still got Marines down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Shine was hoping that he wasn't going to be paying attention to that for a moment, and then maybe he could clear this up. Looks like he will eventually get this. Oh my god, that Marine gets the kill on the Scourge at the very end there. Another dropship going to be sent around the map. Not a huge commitment to drops from Shiny, but he's done so much damage. With okay, never mind. <laughs> I say that there's a not a huge commitment, but there's triple drop heading out on the map. I think this is going to be heading down towards this base. Still a lot of lurkers in this area, so... Probably won't be able to do too much damage with it. Nice snipe on the vessel. 
bunch of irradiates go down. Here comes that drop. He's hoping to force defenses off of this line so that he can break through in that position. Bunch of Scourge coming through, but it's too little too late. The army going to make its way down. All he needs to do is kill this hatchery and he's going to be satisfied. A Dark Swarm comes down. He's going to be able to hold that at least. Doesn't get the vessel there. That's so annoying. Firebat's going to head over towards this natural. If he can kill the Nidus, that would be strong as well. But it feels like Shine has held this pretty well perfectly. If he'd sniped the Defiler that was coming down, he might have been able to take the engagement with the five Lurkers. More vessels are falling. All the drops will go down finally. And these Lurkers will finally restore balance to the fourth base. There it is. The drones are healing. Balance has been restored. Still some lings popping out and just getting killed for free. That one fire bat on four kills already. A lot of scourge are being produced and we're starting to get to that uh, transition here. Ultras are going to be produced pretty darn soon. Let's take a look at the upgrades for the Marines at this point. 2-2. Two, two with three three on the way plus one air weapons as well very good timings on all of these upgrades for shiny look for one more drone kill if he can find it he does get one more another drone kill over here some ling counter attacking going on but marines are present and accounted for we'll be able to stop that finally going to clear up this drop down in the bottom right big plague here on a lot of these marines forcing them back another Vessel just went down there as well. Some good stuff for Shine, but we're transitioning into Battle Cruiser on four bases. But only three gases. That is something to keep in mind. I don't see a third starport just yet, and that gas bank is going to start to grow. Another base going up here in the top right, but Ling counterattacks should be able to deal with this. Taking a base down at bottom center with the Defiler and Lurker here on high ground. He might actually be able to break this now. He irradiated everything. So if he brings his forces down, he could clear this and kill this hatchery. Top right has been denied. Uh, some plagued vessels coming forward. A nice snipe on a Defiler there. Gonna be important. Oh, amazing D-Matrix. Oh, man. What a D-Matrix there. Absolutely sick play. Absolutely sick play there from Shiny. That hurts so badly because you don't have very many Scourge right now. You're trying to make... Uh, all, you're trying to make Ultras. There we go. He does get that Scourge. Or he does get that Battle Cruiser. But breaking down into the bottom center, he's going to be able to deny the fifth base. Here comes some more Scourge to deal with this. A lot of these vessels are going to go down. Ultras are coming forward. Okay, he kills the Scourge. That's unfortunate. He didn't wait for the uh, Ultras to come forward to help out. All these vessels are going to fall. Every single vessel goes down. The Ultras are cleaning house right now with five armor and only two attack on these Marines. He's just destroying this force. Wow, these Ultras worth their weight in gold right now. Nine kills, seven kills on this one, and GG is called. He taps out. Shiny played a great game here, but not able to hang in the late game with Shine. Even though he was, you know, punching and hitting Shine all over the map with those drops, he killed a lot of units. In each base, he did some really good attacking there. He even got the, the battle cruisers in the mix as well. He had four bases online. You can see he's just having a hard time spending his money. The third starport was on the way. I, this is such a hard thing to do. I don't blame Shiny for this at all. I feel like this is something that only the very best Terran players in the world can do is juggle all of the tasks. Killing this base would have been a huge boon. Uh, it wasn't completely necessary, though. 90 HP on that? That's crazy. He almost killed that, guys. If he had just focused that down uh, while the Ultras were killing his units, he might have been okay. 
yeah it's it's so tough to spend all your money in a situation like this i feel like his macro slipped for a moment and he just decided to tap out kind of typical for a terran player at this level though T typical for a terran player uh, anywhere below s rank to just kind of crumble once the pressure is put back onto them they're so used to just hitting you and hitting you and hitting you and doing all the aggression and you know sending in drops and hitting you with tank pushes and you know timings everywhere and running around with their marines and you're just responding to every little thing throwing out uh units just to put out fires and try to stabilize and then as soon as you stabilize and you put out ultras on the map and then they have to deal with your your runarounds and your your attacks from multiple directions suddenly their hands go up in the air and they say well gg game over i'm out of here pretty typical stuff but finally shine firing back getting a little revenge here it wasn't an easy match by any means but he manages to take down shiny in game number three let's jump into game number four all right game number four last game the early pool really paid off for shine let's see if he does it again if he wants to switch back into more 12 hatch play he's got the overlord on the way no pool is forthcoming so seems like he wants to switch back into 12 hatch meanwhile on the other side here shiny not going to tr change it up too much one racks fast expand once again i don't know why you wouldn't go eight racks i really don't um when i play on the ladder it's the scariest thing to go up against and it happens so often uh playing over pool to try to counteract it it just it puts you in an awkward economic position i've actually been practicing quite a bit doing the nine pool versus terran just so that i can i can transition out of it uh, and deal with an eight racks effectively but we're gonna open 12 hatch we've got the gas we've got the pool it's not going to be a lot of early pressure so shine's gonna be feeling okay yeah it's it's tough it's tough to transition if you've just if you come over here and you see this wall one scv and two marines behind this wall and you went for an overpool man it's not a great feeling you just got four lings out in front you can't really do anything you just kind of control the space here try to go into a regular economy uh it's hard it's really really hard and it takes a lot of practice first drone goes down that's not good for shine you never really want to lose that first drone second barracks Ooh, sneaky boy i think that um shiny just recognizes his lane here he's gonna stick to it he throws down the academy he throws down the barracks last game going into a regular economy did not bear bear well for him it did not go well so this time he's not even going to play around with that he's just going to go straight into two racks try to put on immense pressure here to shine and um i i kind of appreciate it i i like it i feel like shiny is kind of the the zealot of terran uh if you guys know who zealot is i'm sure you do he managed to get into the asl a couple seasons ago or last season and you know he's a very strong super scrappy uh just all inish type of zerg players hyper aggression is his game and yeah it seems like you know shiny realizes he's probably not going to be able to take shine on head on in a macro game and He's just not going to play a macro game. He's going to go ahead and just try to kill him right here, right now. If we have two sunken colonies, then this does not work one bit. It's just going to get completely slapped. But I feel like Shine has just barely missed this. He's missed the move out. He scouted with the drone. He lost the drone. He sees the medic now. He's got the lings out. He's going to try and start a couple sunken colonies, but it's way too late. If he can jump on top of maybe uh, the fire bat, or maybe kill a couple of marines, I don't know. It's going to be tough. Either way, I, I feel like maybe just start canceling a bunch of your buildings. Like, I don't, I, I really don't know what you can do here to try and hold on, but he's going to lose all the health on these two 
the, the, the creep colonies right away. He loses all the lings here uh, to these two returning firebats or the two uh, rallying firebats. And that's it. GG. Well played by Shiny. A very sneaky build by him. He allowed himself to get scouted. He looked exactly like he was going to do one racks. And he knows that the Overlord's going to be coming from this direction. It can't make it over top of his natural. So it's a really smart play, honestly. This is well thought out. Uh, even though it's a dirty, uh, filthy build here. Two racks. You, ha you have to keep something over here. You have to send Lings out and try to get a scout in. Uh, in order to figure out that this is coming. It's kind of like the the two factory of TVP. Where like you have to kind of sacrifice something to make sure that it's not coming, right? Maybe send in a Dragoon. Check for a, a CC. F find out. Do whatever you need to do to find out if this uh, if the CC has been built here because otherwise you're probably just going to die. Again, if there's just two sunken colonies or maybe three sunken colonies here, this does nothing and Shiny is just dead. He just he cannot recover. Uh, the Mutas are going to tear him apart. It's, they're going to kill this wall. They're going to kill these barracks. Uh, barracks could float back, but he's going to have to start a huge amount of turrets just to keep the one base alive and the game will be over, but... Good, smart play here by Shiny. I don't see too many players doing this. And it's good to see um, <laughs> just full Firebat rally afterwards. Kind of funny to, uh, to have that. He knows that all he can pop out right now are Lings. And he's just going to smash right through that with all those Firebats. Let's jump into game number five. See if Shine can fire back one last time. It's already three to one in this series for the player who I was expecting to get stomped. Uh, I was really thinking that Shine was going to be able to dominate this match, and I'm completely wrong. Let's see if you can get at least one more on the board before this series is done. All right, match number five, Shine in the bottom left-hand corner. Shiny in the bottom right. Putting out some good games for us here. A lot of aggression. A lot of ways to bash through a strong Zerg opponent with some nasty builds. I especially like the 8 racks into 111. I really feel like that's the the dirtiest play out there, but then then again, hiding two racks is pretty nasty. He could totally do it again as well and you know, Shine's not going to be able to get his overlord uh, into position over the natural most likely. If he sends this one north and then sends his drone down here, maybe he can curve the overlord around and bring it down to this side, but it's it's kind of unlikely and it's risky because you could lose your overlord as it's traversing the map. So there's a good chance we won't have that scout and we could see the exact same build take place once again. Shine throwing down his natural here on 12. Exact same build. Same build here from Shiny as well. The shine that says knee. We've got spawning pool and a gas. Nothing out of the ordinary here. He's going to see this wall in at the front and realize that he's going to be okay. No eight racks on the way. Try to get some damage on this. Don't want to lose this drone again. That is for sure. You never want to lose this early drone. Oh, wow. He actually ended up getting on top of that supply depot. That's so weird. That was a very weird interaction there. Uh, I think it was the, the SCV building and then it suddenly stopped building and it forced the drone up on top of the supply depot. I've actually never seen that before. Uh, you could actually hop that wall. If you just keep spam right clicking, you could actually get over. It's not like you needed to, but or wanted to, but kind of uh, a weird interaction there now first marine heading across the map this is just to force the drone to run that is all you want to do here but if you get the drone kill i mean it's that much better he gets it that's so sick how did he do this twice in one series is what i i want to know because even me i mean i'm garbage at this game i'm b rank trash I know that that first marine is coming and I, I, I just pull the drone. Like we just run the drone to the main. 
the marine turns around and walks away and then the drone comes back it misses like half of a return or something maybe one return uh cycle eight minerals not the biggest deal in the world now that he lost the drone though he's behind he's just straight up behind and shiny can play from here he's okay to play you know two racks or whatever he wants to do from this strong position he got his marine back home even it's uh it's shocking to me that we just saw shine lose that drone again you can see the overlord is going to come around this time making its long traversal of the middle of the map to finally arrive here at the natural and shine can't really see anything right now aside from the wall and a couple of marines back here so he doesn't know that there's not a or that there's a um, cc here so he does want to get in there and get a look at that can't really change his build right now he's already behind so he just goes ahead and grabs his spire fills up that drone count if it was the two racks it would already be coming out by this point so actually sending the overlord around not the biggest deal honestly uh, having this over the natural it's gonna help out a little bit later on but yeah, it's not gonna not gonna make a huge deal. You can at least see the turret placement and stuff like that over here. See what time the turrets are being added on. Maybe you can come directly to the natural and get a kill on a SCV that's building a turret, something like that. It's a scan of the main. Sees the eggs are being made and that there's no third hatch. Uh, third hatch is over here at the top left uh, natural leading into the main and with six mutas popping at the same time this is a much better timing overall for shine it seems like he's uh managed to get into his build a lot better this game we saw before him not being able to hit his mutalist timing and really struggling against shiny's move out this game, I think that was game number one. This game, he's not going to have those same struggles. He's going to have a good number of mutas to fight the Marines and also do some diving in. And yeah, he can see that the turrets are not done. Look at this. He sees the turrets are not done. It's a great opportunity to dive in and start to pick off SCVs. However, the Marine Medic is just going to head straight across the map. It's going to force Shine to respect uh, the presence of these marines and because he has to respect the presence he's not going to be able to deal the damage he wanted to do here in the natural good play here by shiny to put on that pressure he's moving towards the middle of the map just kind of obfuscating his army uh, out here shine is going to find that pick off a marine or two doing a good job not losing any mutas so far wow targeting there really really good um definitely not intentional but he manages to target the low HP Muta in the stack and picks that off, reinforcing very nicely. Behind this, three racks right into factory, sticking to his MO here. This is the build that he likes. Clearly the one that he's co most comfortable with. And so Shiny's going to continue with that play. Pushing forward here with a whole bunch of Marines. We've got a bunch of sunken colonies back at home. Are we going to do the exact same thing again, Shine? Is this for real? I'm gonna make a whole bunch of sunken colonies and go dive into the main. Uh, well, some links here, some mutas are coming back. Finally, the sunken colonies will finish. He's just gonna go for the main base. Let's see what kind of damage he can do. More turrets being added. Um, he's killing a lot of overlords. Oh my god, he just killed three overlords in a row. So Shine actually can't produce anything. He's severely supply blocked right now. Uh, he's getting into the main. He's killing off some turrets. He is uh, making a pretty big problem here for Shiny. He's going to dive right on top of these. Kills off everything and still has 11 mutas remaining at the end of that fight. Lost a couple, but he had some reinforcements coming in. He's holding the main. Wow, we're not going to kill the, the third here. With the third staying alive, this is definitely a big win for Shine. Giant in a very good spot right now. Going after the Mutas. Gonna trap them down here in this bottom corner, but still taking some pretty good fights here using the hold position micro. Picking off the last few Marines, and wow, he's not even gonna clear this. 
Oh my goodness, the Mutas are able to stay with seven remaining. He can still one-shot SCVs. Well, one more goes down. So now no longer one-shotting those SCVs, but some of them are damaged already, so he can still do quite a bit of work here. Marine's getting picked off. Shine is just dominating right now. 29 to 29. There's really not much that Shiny can do. I wish he would have sent the Fire Bat out on the map. If he could get a Fire Bat up into this top left-hand corner, he actually could kill nearly all of the drones and maybe give himself a chance. But without sending anything on the map, Shine has just been able to drone up like crazy. I think we probably just found that. Yeah, he just did three scans, one, two, three, and found this base. But there's really nothing he can do about it right now. His factory lifted. He's just about to start his double star port. He's going to get his gas soon, but he's only on 33 workers. Lifting off his barracks. Going to send it back into the main base. His uh, command center is really low. Oh, Bill the Queen, please. Please do it. Oh. Oh, shine. Oh, shine. Please, man. Shiny's not repairing. If he builds a queen right now, my favorite player in the entire world. Shine will gain that title. Come on, man. Come on. You can do it. <clears throat> don't let me down. I don't see any queens on the way, guys. That is an unfortunate... Uh circumstance here. He's going to send in the Overlord, I guess. I don't know what this Overlord's doing. If he just flies in with 11 Mutas, hits this one time, and then, you know, the Queen is in the stack, you just instantly kill... You instantly get this command center and the game's over. <clears throat> there's there's no way to recover. It's going to be tearing on one base for an infinite amount of time, and it only costs... It costs almost nothing to make that queen. It's crazy how cheap it is, how inexpensive. Marines are going to make their way up here towards this top left. We've got just two sunken colonies and three lurkers that are about to pop out. But the addition of the mutas is going to tip the scales here. Those 11 mutas coming in and picking this off. Killing all the marines and saving the day here. These lurkers about to pop and they will be able to defend this base no problem. Marines and medics heading back home. We've got Greater Spire on the way now. Still, this command center ripe for the picking. I guess the Overlord flew in and died most likely. That is unfortunate. Um, dude, please just do it. Please do it. Oh my god, I think he can see it now. I think Shine can see it. No, he can't. He should be able to see it here in a second. He sees it. He sees how low it is. Oh, please. Shine. Just build a queen. Do it, man. Do it. Do it. Oh, he's not doing it. Just defilers. Defilers on the way. The, the potential for a guardian play is still good, but... Man. He's not going to get the epic shutdown. He's not going to get the, the style points here, unfortunately. We have a consume on the way. No doubt, I think, that Shine is going to be able to dominate in this game. He should be able to clean up this Terran player, no problem. Taking the easy way here. Just taking the, the, the smooth route. Going to go ahead and make a bunch of guardians over top of this natural. Uh, cause a lot of chaos here. And maybe kill a ton of SCVs. There's 54 SCVs now, so a very good number of SCVs for two bases. It's it's actually time to take a third probably here pretty soon. Marines are moving across the map. There's not really any place to go with those. We've got four lurkers stacked here. Uh, we've got one lurker here, but we've got f uh, five, uh, six sunken colonies over in this spot. So... You're not going to be able to break that with just this many Marines. Here comes the Guardians over the Natural. Uh, does need to spread these out a little bit because, you know, the, the vessels are going to be very strong. One of the great things you can do is uh, irradiate your own vessel and then Eraser Trick these. But that's why the Scourge are present. They're ready to, to snipe those. 
Um, if he does get that idea going, he's just going to irradiate the Guardians. And that's fine when they're this stacked. Um, oh, he accidentally irradiates the lower HP Guardian. So that's not good. You really want to click and figure out which one's the... Has the higher HP so that you can target that one down. A couple of uh, Wraiths are going to be put out here. A lot more Irradiates are going to be spent to clear these Guardians though. And this army is moving into the middle of the map. We don't have any vessels with that. So there's really no way to break any of these bases. We still don't have a queen, man. I'm really disappointed. I'm truly disappointed we're sitting here with this queen. Or with this uh, ripe command center. We such an easy pick off there. He's just not going to go for it. Creating a big threat in the center of the map here. Or the, the bottom center. If this uh, Defiler can make its way to the natural, it's going to be another huge pain in the butt for our Terran player to deal with. He's going to get rid of these uh, last few uh, Guardians and pulls the trigger on a big attack into the natural. Can he target down that one Lurker? The Lurker here is going to be able to survive. That Lurker goes to just 88 HP. Oh, nice snipe on the Defiler. Very nice snipe on the Defiler. Now there's no... Uh, Dark Swarm to deal with this. And he's picking off all of the Lurkers here. Plus one, plus one is done. So he's able to tank a few more hits from these Lurkers with the Spread Marines. And he takes a pretty reasonable trade, although he does lose some vessels. This is still a very bad position for Shiny to be in. It's just... Oh, it's so tempting, guys. I really wish I could... Uh, influence this game somehow and get shine to send that queen over there okay i'll stop talking about it i'm sure it's starting to get annoying these uh wraiths out on the map they may be able to snipe something like a defiler or at least scout that it's coming which is always nice i'm gonna eat up a few scourge as well all right he needs the needs the irradiate now just a couple seconds away from that We'll get rid of the Defiler that's encroaching on the base. Very important that he does so. We need to get the second gas going as well. Otherwise, we can't non-stop produce uh, vessels. So, uh, pretty sad that he doesn't have that going. There we go. He does get it online. And he's got a little bit of a gas bank. So, he won't be uh, running out of gas too quickly here. Plague is on the way. Plus one attack is on the way. Plus one armor is done. Plus two armors are just about done as well. Plus two is done for uh, our Terran player. And a drop up into top left-hand corner. This could do some damage, but with the number of lurkers coming up here, I think this will be uh, cleaned up pretty handily. Yeah, the lings are not going to do too much, but the Marines will have to be microed constantly to get any damage going in this area. Dropping down the command center here shortly. He's going to transfer those workers in a moment. Lings over here and a couple of lurkers are going to try and deny this base now. If he can kill this hatchery, it's going to be huge. Uh, killing all of the hatcheries is much better because that denies the, the gas from being mined. But it does... Killing even just one of them is going to slow things down a lot. That is a lot of SCVs. Oh my goodness. So many SCVs are going to go down here. The Lings are going to be killing everything. Another drop into the main now. Diving here on top of this Nidus. He's probably going to be able to kill that off. He kills the Nidus. He's going to go to work on some of these buildings now. Hydroden under threat. Oh, he's not actually controlling. Looks like we finally cleared up top left, but the hatchery went down. Another drop over here. He loses the two dropships. What a good number of Marines. Oh, and this is huge. That's so many kills. Six on this one. Seven on that one. We'll lose one of the... Val oh, no. Actually, he doesn't lose either of these. That's crazy. So many more drones are going to go down. Shiny adding a lot of chaos into this game and creating an opening for himself. He's doing so much damage, but he hasn't... Oh, God. He lost the CC. Oh, no. The CC actually died. That is brutal. And he's not irradiating this Defiler either. He's going to lose so many SCVs over here. He has to pull away. He's got to pull away. Okay. Six kills on that, but he does pull back. 
this is a crazy game now so many drones have been lost We're down to just 32 and the mining here is not very efficient he is getting that uh, extra gas online although there's only two drones mining that Ooh, might get a vessel no not able to get that and I don't see any lurkers under this stack. Oh boy, more uh, eraser trick play is going to come down here. Trying to kill as many drones as he can while he breaks through this position. Nice D matrix there. He's going to eat the shots from that lurker. The Nidus Canal is going to go down. Shiny, has he done it? This is a pure marine attack. I don't even see one medic. There's the one medic coming up from behind right now. That medic solo adventure over there more drones went down here in the top left main but finally the vessels get picked off you only really need one or two lurkers to defend against this because all the marines have stimmed they're pretty low and there's no vessels remaining so this is an intense game guys i'm really not sure who's gonna win i feel like it should be shine but after breaking that top left, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure who's going to take this. We've got plus three armor on the way, but plus three attack is done. That plus three is done and third base has landed. Oh, it's actually the main that floated all the way up here. That is hilarious. It's still at 600 HP. So funny. Dropping a Dark Storm here on that high ground. Going for the vessels, but not able to get them. Three Lurkers here under the Dark Swarm. Got to keep some Scourge alive just in case he wants to go for another Eraser Trick. You're going to lose way too many drones if he gets in there with that. You don't have the Scourge available. Plague could come down. There it is. Good Plague there. More Defilers are coming out. More Scourge as well, importantly. Shiny is trying to break this. He's managed to keep Zerg on three base, uh, three gas, but I mean, eventually we're going to be able to plague and push our way down this ramp. He's starting to recover here, back up to 35 workers. Meanwhile, Shiny is completely mined out of main and natural. He has only two command centers. And he's struggling to get up any more expansions right now. Scourge are going to come forward. There's only two. Oh, man. There's only two lurkers here. This could be broken. This is a big moment right now. We need another dark. Uh, we need another defiler down here. He stims up. But the defiler has ar arrived. Good enough. He'll be able to hold on for now. Dark Swarm comes down. He's got enough for the plague as well big plague there not as big as it could be shine pretty good split shiny pretty good split another irradiate could follow bunch of vessels are gonna fall oh boy that was a lot of vessels going down there kind of the the lifeline here for shiny being cut off but only one lurker underneath that dark storm okay more lurkers gonna come up more Ling's going to come out as well. A lot of uh, fire bats in this army. Should be able to deal with a lot of these Ling's, but it looks like Shine just barely going to shove all this back. A very long parade push coming from bottom right to top left, but it's not going to be enough to break Shine. And we're going to see Ultra here really soon. It's 22 minutes in. Wait, what? What? I have no idea what just happened. I think Shine just he had to go. This is so weird. This was this was a win for him, 100%. I have no idea what's going on in his head right now. Let's let's zip forward a little bit here right to the end. But he stopped this. He killed all the vessels. He killed the, the parade push. There's one base mining. One base. We've still got minerals here. We've still got minerals here. 
We're fine here. This is starting to run out. This is depleted. This is nearly depleted. We're about to get the second gas online in the top left. And he just quits? There's nothing on the map right now for Shiny. There's a couple of SCVs around. We've got defenses over here. Shiny is just... He's hardly building anything. He's hardly mining. He's like long distance mining his main gas. He's mining this gas. He's mining this gas. He's keeping his vessels going. There's nothing in Shine's base. The Ultra's Cavern is very late. Kind of crazy. We're at 22 minutes and Ultra's aren't even done. We're about to hit plus three armor. Lings are spilling out. He's got the production. I have no explanation, guys. I just... I couldn't tell you what was going through Shine's mind at this point. I think we can chop this up to a win for Shine, actually. He was in a, a very strong winning position. I don't know what Shiny could have brought out, but it didn't seem like he was growing. Like, he wasn't trying to get more bases. He was looking really, really dead. And Shine just leaves the game. It makes no sense, but that's the way it goes sometimes on ladder. We don't get the absolute best of, of endings to all of our games. People leave for unknown reasons. It's... uh. It's not like a tournament where there's something really important on the line, but I think we got a pretty decent viewing here. Viewing experience out of this five game series. Shiny showing us his caliber, basically a zealot level player, a zealot style player in that he likes to go for these crazy all ins. He's uh, very good in the early game and has some interesting uh, aggressive styles, but He's not the strongest late game player. He really struggles against macro uh, Zergs once they're able to stabilize and get out into ultras. So we'll be looking forward to more games from him. Shine, I am a, a little disappointed there, Shine. I don't know what you were thinking. Should have given us that. Uh, first of all, should have, should have stolen this CC. My God, I have no idea why he didn't decide to do this. To just build one queen? It doesn't cost a lot. He had the mutas. He could just fly in, hit this one time, and drop the queen in there. It would have been so sick. And then, of course, you know, leaving this game before ultras come out. When he's just finally stabilized with 1,500 gas, by the way. 1,500 gas. The number of ultras that would have popped out here... Uh, in the next few minutes would have been crazy. So many ultras were about to hit the field uh, with that fourth gas coming online and f uh, three armor finishing up. They would have been a serious force to be reckoned with and Shiny almost definitely would have lost this game. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I apologize for the way this one ended. It was completely unexpected. But it's the way she goes. That's the way she goes, boys. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.